Hello, virtual doll convention. We are here in the studio of Greg Ortiz out here in Florida, and we are going to have a workshop that I have been looking forward to for months. Hello, Greg. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're sneaking <laughs> up on you. He's in the me zone. Off guard. I was, yeah, I'm in the zone, ready to lock and loaded. Locked and loaded. So, this is going to be such a fun tutorial because it is so versatile. Tell us what we're going to make today. So today we're going to focus on making masks for smaller dolls. Um, not life size, but you can apply it the same way. It's just all about scale. So you want to, let's start with, let's start with a doll head. I, this is one of my doll heads that I'm not using, so I'm repurposing it. So what you want to do is wrap it with a uh, saran wrap or something plastic that's going to be pliable so that when you layer the first fabric that we're going to use, which is called a buckram, um, mm -hmm. this is basically the fabric that we're going to use. It's a starched um, muslin is basically what it is, but it's already pre-starched. You can do it yourself or you can just buy it at, at a specialty store. I cut it in strips. So that this way, I'm just using a small portion. That's why I do that. Um, and we're going to make, um, press it and form it onto the face. But we need to wet it. So what I have here, our preset, is already, it's been setting for a couple of minutes now. Ideally, you want it to be for about maybe five minutes to give it the moldability that we're going to need. And it makes it flexible and there's a little give. See what I pull? Now... There's one side of it that will stretch and one doesn't. You want the side that's going to stretch because when we set it on the face, we're going to basically use our fingers and we're going to press. See how it does an impression mm -hmm. onto the face? And that's kind of like what we want because when it dries, it's going to stay that way. And that makes our life so much better. So we'll have to work with it a little bit and we press and we hold. And what I like to do is just to keep it in place as we're trying to get this, the shape that we want. We want to pin it to the sides. Now the plastic helps because it's already pressed onto the face, so it serves like a, an adhesive for us. We'll press it to the side. And we'll do a little bit lower. The whole time we still press where we need the indentation so that we have that shape because you're going to use this for your doll so um, prep your doll well if it's something that is you know really old you want to make sure that nothing will damage it or gets wet such a good tip so what we're going to do now is just let this set as it's setting go back to it and kind of keep pressing molding and then let it set. I think it takes about three to four hours before it really has a good shape to it. I'm going to put this aside. We're going to move to this is already completely dry. It's hard. And how long does it take to um, be completely dry? I would say to be safe, five hours. Okay. That's five not hours. That long. No, not that bad. So, you know, have some coffee, watch a movie. And you're probably working on several at a time when you're making these. Yeah, you want to do that. If you have several heads, maybe something from a project that you're not completed and or something that you're just not using, use that as your mold. And then this way you can just align them and pop them out. Um, so from this, we got this. But back up one step. So let's say this was on the actual head, which I'll go ahead and place it right now. We want to trace the shape that you want. So here's the the face, the shape I, I chose. And we're going to line it. I'll take this off. And we're going to make the shape that we want for the face. Once that portion is dry and you've done the shape that you want, you cut it out. Okay. Very simple. And now we have this. Now if you notice, it's not shaped great. It's kind of mm -hmm. a little warped. So in order to fix that, we're going to wire it. Now, there's different types of wiring, and it's all about the gauge. I believe the higher the gauge, is, the thinner the wire. Find a wire that is going to give the pliability that you want and hold its shape. If you use something too thin, then it's not going to help. It still will have this shape. So you want something a little bit more rigid. I personally, for this size, and this head is about a, um, like a, seven inch head 
as far as from chin to forehead, I would use, I believe this one, this one is a 24 gauge. That's the density of the wire. So we want to start by getting a needle and thread. Have this all prepared in advance so that this way you're good to go. You're going to take, let's get this ready here. What we're going to do is from the back portion, we're going to start shaping the wire. And we're just going to whip stitch a very easy stitch because oh, all yeah. this all this is going to get hidden you will not see any of this once the item is completed so do your first knot bear with me here and you're going to whip stitch around and around and around and around you're going to go all the way around and we will have an item that's like this so you can see through mm -hmm. the wiring and look how straight it is now yes so what i've layered right now is papyrus paper i chose this because it's e i want to see the fibers that are underneath and for me it's all about layering so you do a, a, something very thin, very light, uh, because you don't want it to be overpowering to your doll. This is just an accent and accessory. And you want it to be pretty, but you don't want it to be cumbersome. So I use papyrus paper. Uh, it comes in many different types of shapes and, and textures. Mm -hmm. This one's so neat, though. This, this is kind of cool. In order to do this, defined. I go ahead and I use... Um, any tacky glue that's going to dry clear because you don't want it to, you know, obviously overpower the paper. It's very delicate. So you put this on. I guess I'll do that now. So let's say that this was already wired. I'm going to do a very thin coat. Just use your hands, you could use a brush, and just make it even so it's pliable when you do it. Um, make sure that it's going to dry clear, so check the different brands that will do this. Um, there's other options than the one that I'm using. So you take this, and when you press it, you're very light because this is tissue paper, so you want to be gentle, but still it has some give and when it when it creases you just want to pull lightly and then use your finger and you will get that effect see mm, oh yeah that's amazing how quickly and well it works yeah tacky glue's great for so many it, things <laughs> and because it dries clear everything that's mm -hmm. going to show is going to be just like this you cut out the shape of the eyes and then it also gives it more rigidity rigid, rigidity, rigidity i think i think it's we just made up a new word um so here you are it's nice and taut and beautiful you do it on both sides and now it's time to decorate find the little trims and baubles and any the sky's uh, the limit i yeah. love your trims this is just great so here's a i love the crochet here's a selection of things i know it doesn't look much right now but um, whatever I choose, I try to give two versions of it. So if something is um, movable, I will coordinate it with making it stiff. So in this piece, let me refer to, I'll find little trims. It doesn't have to be much. You, it goes mm -hmm. a long way. So little things like this antique laces things that you have torn that normally you would say oh i throw that away it's good stuff you have this to me is to me this is money but cut Absolutely. the little pieces that you'd like and start designing just texturing with other applications and just let your imagination go crazy so for me, I see this little piece right here that's going to work just fine for me. And we'll go around. 
and it's okay that you have like these frayed edges that's that's wonderful because you want to you want things to be three-dimensional you want everything to be so flat that it, it even though you've layered it still looks flat mm -hmm. you know so to me let's audition some pieces and maybe see to me this is too big so maybe i'll just cut a petal Um, and sometimes if you have other trims that maybe you think would work together, but they're not the right color, dye them. You can use ink, you can use tea, you can use wine, you can use, and have a glass of wine on the way. But <laughs> you can, um, you can age anything. And you can, I love what you taught us that you can dye lace and you can do a lot of things that, oh, I love that. Yeah, so see, we're auditioning this. I like things that are up, they're not even. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, that looks great. And we're going to use the same type of glue, a tacky glue that's clear. And that works. So I will go ahead, in this case, I will put it on my finger because I want to control the amount of glue now since we already have one layer going. Find a cap to this so it'll be easier for me. Okay, so I use my hands a lot, so don't be afraid. No, your fingers are your best tool. They're the you... best thing ever. You don't really need that many tools. Um, so it's a nice light coat, but it's substantial depending on what you're using. It's okay if it overlaps, you can always take away. You press this down and see, we're starting to get. A nice dimension um, if we need a little bit more glue there we go let's see I'm using this piece right here so I sometimes will just grab that piece add a couple of dollops there um, I lost the cap and oh, it's right over there next to the wire ah there we go and you want to do this until you're happy with it just keep going and keep going and keep going. Add as many things as you want. Um, do the layers. I'd recommend doing the layers of the base color. And then if you're going to accent with color, leave that for the last because that's obviously the pops of color that you're going to give it. Now, I want to use some color. So if I chose this, obviously it's too big. So I need to find things that are to scale that are not going to take away and make our work look too heavy so I'll take something small now notice that it's flimsy on some of these pieces I don't mind that but if I'm going to have something stand out over the part that we already framed in then I'll go and use some type of fabric stiffener they also make it in sprays um, they all work the same it just depends on the degree of how quick something will dry or how long you're willing to wait. Um, they make different variations. There's a matte version, there's a shiny version. Um, it's just up to your taste. So in this case, uh, in order to stiffen these, I have a board that I can wipe down. So I'm able to use adhesives and then just wipe it off. I'll just go ahead and spray a bit. And what is this spray? This is a stiffener. The stiffener, okay. Mm -hmm. yes. it's a fa it comes in, in spray form, but it also nice. comes in liquid. How long does it take to stiffen? Now, it, it varies because it will have a slight stiffness, but then you just keep layering the stiffness, and then you get how rigid you want something. Mm -hmm. With this, you actually submerge your fabric into it. You let it set for a little bit, let the, the fibers and threads absorb it. And then it's going to be white looking, and you let, just let that dry. And okay. that will be super stiff. So it just depends on what how the project is. Yeah. Um, so I want, in this case, let's say this was completely dried and it's really stiff. I want this flower and I want the leaves, but I don't want them in that order. Mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect it. I know the form of what I want, so I'll take the layer that's going to go underneath the flowers and cut that out. 
So you cut these out. They don't have to be this way. That's the way it was embroidered. But you can go ahead and cut them separately to give it flow and movement. These are little circles. To me, they're money. I keep those aside because I'll end up accenting them. accenting them somewhere else. So if I took this, notice the silhouette of the mask. You can change the silhouette mm. completely by just adding little simple things oh, like this. It's amazing then, what one little thing will do. Mm -hmm, and you can move. This was, We were using this earlier, but you can change the shape of everything. Oops. So something like this, you just grab a pin, st stick it there. It'll hold it in place. Take the other one. And then you attach it. Mm -hmm. You can't tell the difference. I love that pop of color. Now, the reason I pin things together is because sometimes after I've designed something, I'll take, I'll sit back and look at it, and sometimes I change my mind. So before you glue everything, kind of just set things and let your eyes dictate how you want things to be set. I don't like things that are even. I like things that are odd. And that's kind of, that's a skill because to figure out that because I always just tend to think everything has to be matchy-matchy. No, 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 no. Don't matchy-matchy. Right. And the thing is that sometimes fabrics look better uh, wrong side, wrong side in. So flip the fabrics. You don't have to use the fabric that you're supposed to be facing and looking at. Mm -hmm. You can just turn it, reverse it is I guess basically what I'm saying. And um, go ahead and use that because that's a completely different texture. And, and feel. And isn't it wonderful when you can mix textures and patterns especially? Oh my gosh. Ugh. It's, it's as yeah. long as you have creativity, it's just gonna go. So here, even though it was round, now you're starting to see that it has a different feeling. Mm -hmm. And now if I just cut the flower out, now mind you, all this has had time to set, dry, don't rush it, let things dry, because um, the, texture, the texture of everything that you use is going to change the feeling of the of your work. So take the moment and let things set because you might not like it after it dries. Okay, so this flower is too big, so I'm just going to cut it down. You can just really I would suggest to really pay attention to the scale of what you're using because then it's just going to be so obvious that you just put something on there. Mm -hmm. you, want it, you want it to. So for right now, just by playing around with this, I'm feeling that I need to trim this and go around it. Okay, so let's say you did, your designs are all set. So you move on. Because this is so, uh, the scale is so small, and I want to, really highlight the eyes because right now it's just kind of like you see them but you don't mm -hmm. so i'll go to here's some options there's some Love trims these, these trims now these are really thin and, and so for these i use tweezers to to attach them because i got big clunky hands so but you got these right here just any type of threads Anything that you want it to be delicate looking, then that's kind of like what you want to stick with. You want to stay, there's so many different variations and styles. You can find these at your craft store. You can find them at, at anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere, really. Your own clothing, that. anything. Shoelaces. Have you ever used like leaves and things that you found like oh, gosh, in nature? Yeah. And... yeah. I, I had to restrain myself because in my head it's like I can use everything. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, in order for me to actually um kind of line the eyes i'll use tweezers and what i do is because this is so thin and notice the fibers mm -hmm. that go to this this is really cool so you got that that will be prominent and then you got these little frayed edges that will come out and it will really be really cool you'll see in a second so with the magic of uh video we're going to speed through this so I don't mind if we overlap. You could do it with the bottle or you can overlap because like I said, this will dry translucent and it won't affect anything. Now, because I want the fray edges, I want to go ahead and use the tweezers. 
I'm just going to do one eye just to give you an idea. See, and that helps. Those are your fingers. I love that. So it's kind of like eyelashes. Mm-hmm. Now, I know you can see the glue right now, but once this dries, you will not see anything. And all you will see is just all this frayed edges, and you see the border of that. I pretty much know how much I'm going to use, so I'm just going to take scissors, cut that off, take this, and finish where I'm at. incredible how quickly it takes shape yeah so now you can versus mm -hmm. this one look at the difference yeah so now if you wanted this to be thicker just go around with another layer like and so this right here is sticking out it's kind of bugging me you just go in and snip it Now, I don't waste anything, so I'll just go back in and push this back in. And it becomes an accent. Sometimes the best mistakes are the best thing. It totally does. I love I, uh, that. I remember yeah. doing a uh, Humpty Dumpty, and I put it in the oven. And you're not supposed to. You're supposed to bake it at, I don't know how many, uh, the, the heat level and I overbaked it, so it blew up in the <laughs> oven. But what did I do? I pieced it together, because what's the story? He Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. He had a great fall. He, and he broke. He broke, and then he was so put I, back together again. I pieced him back together, and That's it was the so best perfect. little thing I did. So here we go with the eyes. Do it on both sides. Um, let your applications set if you want them. The, the the type of stiffness you want but see this is movable this one won't be so it just gives it mm -hmm. very playful yeah so when you've added all your trims that you want and you're completely happy there's these beautiful little pieces mm -hmm. that um that you pro probably couldn't use for anything else just use them on something like this and then when you're done what a great... adding all the layers oh this look. is that's gorgeous this is what you can come up with i love that what a great way to salvage these wonderful trims and parts and pieces that are that are just gorgeous that you don't want to throw away. Right. It's amazing. So here here are the uh the what we were doing with the eyes. I did that also. I actually added some lines just to give it more uh complete look. Um this is the part that I was talking about about stiffening and letting this really set. And then we have the soft with the harder. It's just uh, just very playful you just make a whole i think it is fabulous so do you put them on your dolls or do you have them holding them usually or sometimes they're holding them um or I, i'll put like a, uh, a a stick and it becomes a scepter so it's it's uh unlimited what you can do isn't that a fun idea everybody and, and the whole cost of making one of these of course your time but you can make these very affordably with just fun things that you have around yeah you don't have to go crazy going to yeah. the store buying stuff just use what you have um creativity is what you need and let me see if i have a face that i could put it on and you can see so fun the head that i used I don't think I have her here, but yeah. And the thing with the wiring, the good thing with the wiring is that you can make it as taut as you want, or you can expand it as much as you want. And it's moldable and pliable, so you can do anything. Oh, I love that about it. Oh, totally. Oh. See, if the dolls, you want it tighter, or you want this to turn in more, or you want this to expand more, it just depends what you're looking for so much fun these are theatrical you can do themes you could do for halloween you can do for christmas yeah, i mean you could do occasions it, yeah. yeah so gifts fun. it's endless i'm thinking tiny ones like for so from this to that to this. so cool so cool greg thank you i love this so we want to see your masks everybody after you make them so much fun.
We're going to start making them right away. <laughs> that was so much fun, Greg. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. All right. Bye.